What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Altcoin Buzz. Today we're going to talk about market cap and how it's calculated. So I've gotten a couple requests about making a video about touching on the market capitalization of the cryptocurrency market so that maybe a newbie or someone who's new to the market uh, can get a clearer understanding about it and that makes sense. Now when, when someone says a hundred billion dollars came out of the market cap that does not actually mean that $100 billion in fiat came out of the market cap. It means that um, the, the, the demand for Bitcoin or for, for cryptocurrency in general went down, which caused the price to go down uh, across the board. But let's talk about Bitcoin in particular. So the market capitalization for Bitcoin, right? The way you get this number, and a lot of you probably already know this, you take the um, circulating supply and you divide that into, um, or I'm sorry, <laughs> you take seven thousand dollars nine ninety five, and you calculate that times sixteen eight fifty two six twenty five. These two numbers are what the the calculation is, right? And that multiple goes in, it creates this number. Okay, so watch. This was when the when the uh, price was eight thousand and ten dollars. I would take that total circulating supply and I would get that market capitalization, right? So that's just a real basic uh, way that market calculate uh, market cap is calculated. I hope that makes sense. So you just take just to confirm. So you take the circulating supply and times it by the price, and that's your market cap. But this market cap does not necessarily represent the amount of fiat dollars that are actually placed inside of this volume here, right? So it comes down to, so when you're watching this right here, you can see the order book on GDAX, right? See this green candle right here. So people are willing to pay at this price, 8,027. So if the demand went down, then so too would the price of the actual Bitcoin. So I hope that makes some sense. Let me, let me kind of elaborate on that. If you've gone to Las Vegas before, let's say you took out a futures bet on the Patriots to win the Super Bowl and the odds were 10 to one, right? So August, you take out a futures bet on Patriots to win the Super Bowl. That means if you put down a thousand dollars and it's 10 to one odds, you would get minus the house fees, right? You would get basically uh, $10,000 minus house fees, whatever those are. We're not calculating that because you also have to keep that in consideration when you're talking about exchanges, right? But that number can fluctuate at any given time. It could go to nine to one odds. It could go to 15 to one odds, but whatever you bought in at is what you're set at, right? So that depends. So that the, the futures bet on the Super Bowl in Vegas could go up uh, to nine to one, if more and more, if more people wanted the or were picking the Patriots to win, it would bring that uh, that favorability, that ratio up or down. I'm sorry. And then if it if it went in the opposite direction, it would go to 15 to one, right? So if more people started picking the the Broncos and and less of the um, Patriots, that would be what would drive the price inversely. I mean, I'm trying to explain this very simply, but at the end of the day, if you saw, I don't know, $10 million in fiat injected into the market, that does not mean necessarily that the price of the market cap will go up by $10 million. We don't know the exact number, and I'm not going to get too deep into that because that's a guessing game that I'm, I, I don't think I can solve right now. <laughs> you guys can try and solve that in the comments, but I'm not trying to answer that in a video, how all that works. But I just wanted to put this out there in very simple terms. Because when someone says that $100, million, $100 billion came off the market cap, that does not mean that it um, all went in, $100 billion went into fiat, okay? So, um, yeah, when you're looking at GDAX or something like this, you can see these green candles indicate a, um, a you know, that there was a higher demand at that price, okay? So, what's another factor that, or something I can point out? Um... I wanted to touch on this on Crypto Compare. So when you're on Crypto Compare, you can see by, you can go to coins here and you can go and check and see the, the, the BTC volume by currency. You can see that most of the volume is made up of Japanese yen and then the rest is US dollars. And then you can see 10% of the market is made up in Tether. 
Uh, less than 10% is made up in Euro, and a very small fraction is Korean won. So most of this Bitcoin volume is in Kore uh, Japanese yen. Isn't that interesting? So if you wanted to know for any coin, let's just say you wanted to know for Ethereum, right? So let's take a look at Ethereum and see where the volume's at. So you can see most of it's in USD, BTC, USDT, Korean won, Euro. So I'm just showing you guys this because while we're at it, um, you know, that, that can maybe give you some clearer insight. So as you can see, most of the, the volume Ether to BTC is in on OKX, right? And you can see all that on here also, you know, Bitfinex. Another thing that you, you can take a look at is this right here. This is called bitinfocharts.com. You can see the address. This is, a, this is the Bitfinex wallet. In here, you can see the number of ins and the number of outs. So if you wanted to go to this website, Bitinfo Charts, and you go here to Rich List, and you can look at Bitcoin or Litecoin, whatever, and you can see the addresses that hold the volume or where the volume is, right? Percent of the coins, 1% of them is with a Bitfinex cold wallet that's at this public address. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of touch on that to let you know that when the, when they say, when someone says that money's coming out of the market in market cap, it does not necessarily mean it's coming out in fiat. It means it's coming off um, basically kind of like the way the bookies in Vegas work. That's the best way I can draw the comparison, but markets are different. Market capitalization is a little bit different uh, than Vegas style, you know. Um, let me take a look at something else here. The next part that I want to touch on is the, uh, this article here on Investopedia. It's called Market Capitalization Defined, and it's going to kind of go over everything, but it's more clearly outlined. Um, calculating market cap. Market cap capitalization is just a fancy name for a straightforward concept. It is the market value of a company's outstanding shares. This figure is found by taking the stock price and multiplying it by the total number of shares outstanding. For example, if Corey's Tequila Corporation was trading at $20 per share and it had 1 million shares outstanding, then the market capitalization would be $20, or $20 million. So that's $20 times 1 million. It's that simple. Why is it important? So a common misconception is that market cap, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. A common misconception is that the higher the stock price, the larger the company. Stock price, however, may misrepresent a company's actual worth. If we look at two fairly large companies, IBM and Microsoft, on, Jan on February 15, 2013, stock prices were 199 and 28 respectively. Although IBM's stock price was higher, we can see that Microsoft's market cap of 234 billion was actually larger than IBM's 225 billion. If we compared the, com the, com the two companies by solely looking at their stock prices, we would not be comparing their true values, which are affected by the number of outstanding shares each company has. So that's where they're talking, in our case, they're talking about coins. So uh, IBM or Microsoft, whichever one there it has the higher number, obviously has the, the lower circulating supply, which would indicate the higher per stock price. So that's a lot of you already know that. So th that's where also it comes in mega cap, large cap, mid cap, small cap, micro cap, nano cap, the bottom line. Understanding the market cap is not just important if you're investing directly in stocks, it is also useful for mutual fund investors as many funds will list the average or median price capitalization of its holdings, as the name suggests. That, this gives the middle ground of the fund's equity investments, letting investors know if the fund primarily invests in large, mid, or small, market, or small cap stocks. So this kind of outlines it, but as you can see, the, I think in this video, we really hit the nail on the head with what you needed to know about market capitalization. At least that would be the, the basics. I mean, there's a lot more to it. And go, when, the more we go down that rabbit hole, the more confusing it gets um, to really talk about because there's a lot of things that are really speculative and hard to understand about that. But just seeing that 10% of the volume in Bitcoin is tied up with Tether 
uh, gives you some sort of indication of how important Tether is to the price, right? Uh, if that were to go away or something were to happen. Now, if we just go on here to Twitter, if you're not already following us, you can, Altcoin Buzz IO. Um, we've got an interview here with Ethereum Blue. If you haven't already checked out that video, that's on our Altcoin Buzz uh, podcast channel, which is different than this, uh, this channel here. So you can subscribe to that. And this is an interview with Uni, the founder of Ethereum Blue. And uh, I'm putting that out there. See Altcoin Buzz podcast. It's different. You can turn on the bell if you want to get notified there also. So if you like Ethereum Blue, come on to our podcast channel. It's also on the side um, of our channel here. If we just go to our channel. Um, let's see here. Altcoin Buzz. Oh, well, there's no actual... It's, it's, feature, it's a featured channel on the side of our, cha our main channel. So you can pick it up there if, you don't, if you're having a hard time circulating it or just get it on our Twitter. So, yeah, just want to put that out there. One more thing that I tweeted out on my personal Twitter. Uh, if you guys keep up with me over there, I'm asking you guys, are you guys pretty excited about LightPay option? Um, I'm becoming very bullish on Litecoin. At these at these prices anyone else so what do you guys think of litecoin at these prices i'm just putting that out there throwing you know seeing what you guys think and feel and uh if you're new to this channel you can subscribe if you've been subscribed you can turn on that bell and get notified when videos like this drop we'll see you guys next time